Sulfate resisting cement or SRC is a specialized type of Portland cement with a material composition that exhibits enhanced resistance to sulfate or it protects concrete structures that are exposed to sulfate rich environment. Now, SRC is manufactured by modifying the composition of ordinary Portland cement that we know. The main important element that contributes to sulfate reaction is the presence of C3A and C4AF. So, a sulfate resisting cement is designed such a way that the amount of C3A is kept at a level below 5% and the overall quantity of C3A and C4AF is placed below 25%. This helps to reduce the formation of sulfate salts that are the byproducts of sulfate attack or the sulfate reaction. A strong relationship exists between the sulfate resistance of the concrete and the tricalcium aluminate content of cement, that is C3A. Higher the C3A content, the more prone the concrete is to sulfate attack. So to improve the sulfate resistance of concrete, we lower the C3A cement that is available. Now, if you be more precise about the codes and the recommendation provided for sulfate resisting cement, ASTM C150 provides sulfate resisting cement by a category of type 5. So, ASTM C150 type 2 cement for medium sulfate resistance have a C3A content less than 8%. And we have type 5 cement that is high sulfate resistant cement with a C3A content less than 5% and are typically specified for sulfate environments. Now, if you compare the general composition of box compounds present in SRC and OPC, as per the general recommendation of ASTM, it is important to note that the composition ranges provided for both type 5 cement and OPC depends upon the specific manufacturer as well as the regional standards. You can see that the percentage of tricalcium aluminate is far lower compared to what ordinary Portland cement demands. Lower C3A content minimizes the risk of sulfate re related deterioration as C3A is highly reactive with sulfates. To understand better how a lower value of C3A in an SRC contributes to more sulfate resistance, we'll check out how sulfate attack of concrete happens. Sulfate attack on concrete occurs when sulfate from the external sources like groundwater or soil react with the components of the cement paste in the concrete. So this reaction can lead to the deterioration of the concrete structure over the time. Other than the hydration products that contributes to the strength of the concrete, there are certain other expansive compounds formed when these elements react with the exterior sulfate ions present. There are two possible sulfate attack reactions. The first reaction, and which is the common one, is the sulfate attack where the reaction of sulfate ions with calcium hydroxide ions happens, as well as with the C3A happens, which will result in the formation of gypsum and an extensive ettringite. So this reaction occurs under normal temperature and relatively moist condition. It begins with this dissolution of calcium hydroxide from the cement paste, leading to an increased capillary porosity of the cement paste. Unless a sulfate environment is present, these are the hydration products that contribute to the strength of the concrete. But when sulfate ion come in contact, these products start reacting further, which provide other expansive compounds which are harmful for the concrete structure. Other than this ettringite formation, a second form of attack that is possible is the formation of thomocyte. Thomocyte is a compound that forms during the sulfate attack on concrete where the sulfates react with the CSH, that is the calcium silicate hydrate compound, which is the main strength giving component of the cement paste in concrete that we have studied in the hydration of OPC. So thomocyte can cause significant damage to concrete structures. It forms expansive crystals within the concrete matrix, leading to cracking, loss of strength, as well as the deterioration of the overall structure. 
Now, as this formation of ettringite and thomasite products is very problematic and it will surely compromise the structural integrity, the main solution for this is reduce the amount of C3A content. So this is how sulfate resisting cement was developed. C3A is the primary component responsible for the ettringite formation. Hence, when it comes to sulfate resisting cement, we bring ways to reduce the amount of C3A either by the reduction of C3A content or by replacing the cement particles with porcelains that can help improve the structural integrity of the structure. Let's check out the recommendation of normal weight concrete that is being subjected to sulfate attack provided by ACI 2001. The table gives the recommendation for type of cement, the water cement ratio for normal weight concrete, which will be exposed to sulfate that is present in soil, groundwater or seawater. And in the table, you see that the conditions provided are sulfate conditions for mild, moderate and severe. We look into the condition where the presence of sulfate ions in parts per volume in water is between 150 and 1500 that is moderate and 1500 above that is severe. So when the moderate condition is asked you go for a type 2 cement with IPMS and ISMS or a type 2 plus a porcelain. So porcelain material is being used in order to improve the structural integrity. In the case of severe conditions we go for type 5 cement with type 2 as well as a porcelain combination. So here IS and IP represent Portland blast furnace slag cement and Portland porcelain cement as per the ASTM blended cement designation as per ASTM C595. Now the MS represent the moderate sulfate resistance and HS represents the high sulfate resistance. These are performance specifications that are provided by ASTM and it is a newly updated specifications from ASTM. So this partial replacement of Portland cement with the porcelain like low calcium fly ash, ground granulated blast furnace flag or silica fume equally reduce the potential for sulfate attack. So in addition to reduction of the C3A content, we also facilitate using porcelains as a better replacement or, or better improvement for sulfate resistance. These porcelains consume the calcium in the pore water, reduces the total mass of C3A content and decreases the permeability. Now when deciding which porcelain to choose for sulfate resisting concrete, it is important to consider its calcium oxide content, that is the CaO content. A high percentage of CaO in fly ash may accelerate the sulfate problem substantially. For instance, ASTM class F fly ash with less than 10% CaO will certainly improve the resistance of concrete to sulfate attack. Similarly, silica fume, metacovalin and as well as natural porcelains consume calcium to improve the sulfate resistance. Now this is all about the basic concept behind sulfate resisting cement, sulfate attack as well as how SRCs are being formulated. For more such informative and in-depth videos on civil engineering and construction as well as concrete technology, kindly share and subscribe to our channel Civil Engineering Fanatics.